Sweden in the Great Northern War. That's a very tough situation. And today I'm gonna go and try saving this little nation over here from being completely ruined and losing its great power status in the world against Russia, Denmark, Commonwealth and Saxony. Sounds not that bad, right? But if you look at this, it's not all. We're gonna be outnumbered almost 7 to 1. I'm gonna fix it? Take a look yourself. Did you know that subscribing to this channel is giving you plus 100% of a chance for the 666 errors? Impossible. Only 9 rolls in the battles and no hunting accidents for the whole 2022nd year. Oh boy, this is not gonna be an easy episode. I think it might be the hardest episode that I've done. Cause the Great Nordic War. We're fighting with Denmark, Commonwealth, Russia and Saxony and they are having around 200k of infantry, 90k of cav and 30k of artillery while by ourselves <laughs> we have 50k troops which means that they have 6-7 times more troops than us sounds easy right? Sweden actually was winning in the beginning of the war so we might do the same and our advantage is gonna be the technology because except Denmark and Saxony those guys are two military technologies behind which are big differences. Then I'm gonna go to mission tree, get the morale of armies here from the policies. I'm gonna definitely use the morale of navies because I want to win with the navy with Denmark. I'm gonna pick the heavy ship combat ability, but that I'll pick for the naval battle. And here that's gonna be infantry combat ability and I'm also gonna take the reinforced speed once this will be Need it. Then from these things, I don't really need anything, so I'll just leave it. And yeah, we are not earning much of the money, so that's gonna be a huge problem. And uh, from here, we need to take some bonuses, but not many. I'm gonna take the cheaper advisor, more of armies for fighting different religion. From the nobility, I'm gonna take the manpower bonus, the 11%. And from the burgers, obviously, we are gonna go and take the 1% loans and additional prestige for even higher morale of armies. For advisors, I will keep the mill focus, and that's gonna be ideally probably the discipline guy, the trade efficiency, and here that's gonna be the guy for inflation reduction. This way we are having 125% of the discipline and we have 665 Carl 12. What's interesting in 1700 this king, so our king that is also strict at the same time, he was just 18 years old and he was this level of a general. I'll start by taking my whole fleet over here as we want to go and do one big push against Denmark to at least get their capital, right? We get the capital, we'll block the ports over here with our navy and we're gonna go and focus on piecing out separately Russia and Commonwealth. As we are on the first mission, we're not gonna build that much, but we definitely need more artillery. We only have 5,000, so let me build at least additional 5,000, 2, 3, 4, 5, and even I would say 1, 2, 3, 4 as we want to have bigger damage from the artillery and of course at the same time bigger bonuses versus the force. There goes the naval battle over here so let me go and take the heavy ship combat ability and I'm not really sure if we can win it. I made a terrible mistake by using transports over here, I completely forgot that I have them. But if I attack this 14 ship, oh ho 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 yes. Okay, okay, they were just scared to do anything. That's good. From this navy let me take down the transport ships because they are not really useful and let me go and try killing more ships. I think that that be, might be another wipe of the navy, almost, and let's go farther. Now this battle will be crucial and see that's not going as easy as the previous ones because they have 18 heavy ships. So to make sure we win it, I will reinforce with the transport ships to increase the general morale. But no one lost the ship yet. That's going very close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the worst one is when you start losing ships, like me right now, where I need to run away. But I can just use that they are really not sticking together with the fleet. So I'm just gonna go do this, this, and this. So this way I should be able to wipe some fleets and get ourselves an advantage at the very start of the war. Now as they engage to me, of course, I'm just gonna go and run away, which is gonna be possible on 5th of May. 
And you can see that it's all good. Rush is ready shooting me now here. So let me go and get the defensive edict. Fun fact is that right now it's not a Borg. But during the Great Northern War, once Russians took over this province and finally get themselves access to the Baltic Sea, which was my biggest goal in this war, they started building their future capital here, which is of course St. Petersburg. And it was finished and became their official capital by 1712. So still in the middle of the war. You know what? Screw it. I'll take this straight another time. It's anyway 4th level 7. Let's go and take down Russians, especially that they are sitting me down here. This stack is having absolutely no artillery, so that's our chance. And remember that Russians are here, they are still at war with the Ottomans. So I can use this, as they are busy, I can use this to just go and separate with them. And from Russians, I would like to take some Novgorod trade centers. So let's see how we're gonna go and do with two technologies advantage. That's actually not as good as I thought, but 4.7 morale. Okay, we have less morale, so the morale is not looking that good for us. But take a look at this. They have no discipline. Absolutely zero. Nothing. Null. Nada. We have 125. So, oh, the losses. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. I absolutely love that. Let's go and try wiping the Saxony army right now. Let's see if we can... Yes. Now the Russians will be arriving, but they will attack us on the woods, so that should be... Ah, I think that's a good start of the war. They already have 100 k losses. Uh, so we can go and try sieging down Novgorod. Do we have a better general for siege? Because Karls is great for battles. Mm, no. Unfortunate. To make it fast, I'm just gonna go and bridge the walls. Then I'm gonna split plan to go on both Russians. Is Poland disloyal? Who else is disloyal? So as long as I don't go on the territory, they're gonna do nothing in the war. This is very good news and helpful for us. To minimize our manpower losses in this siege, it's just fourth level two. I'm gonna take my whore half out of it. I'm gonna take four thousand of artillery, couple of thousands of infantry. I'm gonna take them. And start changing down Skuf. Those are level 2 forts, and with our army quality difference, we shouldn't be scared of any battles. I need to keep burning my army professional links because we don't have any manpower, and that's really problematic. And Russians are attacking us in Moscow, but how did AI calculate that they have any chance of winning with us over here? Oh, okay. That changes a bit, but I think we still. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. But look at the losses. I need to try winning on the navy finally. Because they started trying to land on my lands here. Ah, uh, They have just too many heavy ships. There's no chance I can win it. Unless I start building more heavy ships myself. Or maybe... That might be also the trick. Maybe I'm just gonna build a flagship by myself. And on top of that... I'm gonna do what's called a pro gamer move. Cancel the 1% loans. Take with the 1% loans again, and let me build a couple of additional heavy ships. The military defense of Gustavus Adolphus. That's giving us army professionalism and anti the of the game, infantry cost and morale of armies, or we can get mercenary maintenance, mercenary manpower, or we can get morale of navies. I will actually go for morale of navies over here to win with the Danish fleet. Can we wipe 50k of Russians? Not... But <laughs> never mind, yes, yes we can. Oh no, we're gonna lose one prestige. But we've gained 25%. Do we have a max war score here? Yeah, we do have max war score for winning battles. And Russian army just decreased to just 70k. Okay, I've lost most of my heavy ships, but Denmark lost the whole fleet. Except the heavy ships. It's gonna be even more beautiful because tech 23 is new infantry. It's calf shock and we still have plenty of calf because we started with this and additional military tactics. Uh, we started taking loans, so I'm just gonna go to the mission to develop Stockholm twice. One, two. Cancel my 1% loans and take them again. Russia is having slight problems. What I want to take from them is the two trade centers in the Novgorod trade node and maybe a little bit of the money, but you can see we are getting sieging war goal. How we can siege a war goal if war goal 
show superiority. What the hell? First aspect in here is gonna be manpower recovery speed because we have the biggest problems with the manpower itself. Russians are accepting the PZ right now. Tick. Now I can gather my troops together and uh, deal with Commonwealth and Saxony. How about Polish army quality? Russian we already checked. Polish should be slightly better. But we never know until... Oof. Oof. Is it two stack wipes? Oof. 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 That was Polish army. In general, as we got rid of Russians, I'll, I'll just keep consolidating my armies to start saving manpower and money. We are pretty much making a remake of the Swedish Delude over here. Delush, however this is pronounced. Wielki Potop Szwedzki in Polish. Saxony, please give me Danzig and Tuchola, or like, more like Gdańsk and Tuchola. Thank you so much. <sighs> it's time to take down Denmark itself as the last goal of this war. I also noticed that ah, they still have heavy ships here, but with no Admiral. So what if we engage without the transport ships and try fighting? This is gonna be really tough to win it. Oh, screw it, I'm just gonna go and send all the ships and I'm just gonna can't, not even winning, like getting those heavy ships down because you can see they are not going down anytime soon. I just can't for him to run away. Or maybe, maybe he lost the first ship. 17 ships. Come on. Flagship is still alive. Come on. Sick. <laughs> yeah, no flagship anymore. Okay. We got seven heavy ships down. And we actually, I, I think even I stole some heavy ships. Time to finish. Taking all of those princes for cool borders and trade centers. And also here for the cool borders and the trade centers. On top of that, full money. Maybe not full money, but to 90% and the war reparations. Now, thanks to it, after we wait a month, let's see how it looks on the trades. So, we have 8% of the trade power in Lübeck, but this is because it's not our main node, so we could get it way higher. So, what if we move our main node to Lübeck? I'm just not so sure about that because there's so many more trade centers that we don't have. My first government reform, yes, in 1710 is of course the tax... Me no, 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 of course it's gonna be the, the national tax... <laughs> See, and I said tax. Manpower modifier. <laughs> I just beat around 10 trade ships that I want to test how they're gonna impact my trade income. So first of all, we try protecting trade in Baltic Sea and see how much income it's gonna give us. That's around one ducat. Okay, so it's not that much. What if we send it to Novgorod? And for Novgorod, we also have two choices. First of all, just because I'm collecting here, then I'm gonna start transferring instead and see the difference. So if the ships, it's more, it's over two ducats compared to none. But what if we start transferring instead of collecting? This is not 26.5, 27. So it's even higher. What if we send the same ships to protect in Lübeck? And it's gonna be not 27.1, but 26. So actually, protecting trade in Novgorod is as of now the best. What if we try changing our main node to Lubeck? I think it might be a little bit too early to do so. But let me see. It's 26.26 .26 of income and it's 14.16. But we're not collecting in Baltic Sea. Let me try collecting in Baltic Sea at the same time. And what I see is. Commonwealth just broke free. Ah, it's pretty much the same with the difference that we spent 200 diplo points on that. But if we continue the expansion here, like getting richly a few additional trade centers and increasing those trade centers, for what I don't just have money as of now, then it would be definitely worth it. I was thinking about attacking Prussia, but the issue with Prussia is they are to Austria, which wouldn't be big of a problem if Austria wasn't allied to England, Spain, and Russia. What if you wait for the end of the truce with Russia ending in next year and we just go and take more provinces in Novgorod from them to even increase this income that we're having right now even higher. I just got my flagship finished and it's obviously getting trade power per ship in the fleet and I'm gonna try sending it to Lübeck instead of Novgorod. So instead of 29 income, that's gonna be maybe even more. Get me a monthly 30 of trade income. So we're getting it even higher 
and if he wants to fight Russians, we need to increase the amount of the troops that we are having. Oh boy. 15% more of armies for 10 years. My last war today is gonna be the war against Commonwealth. And this is because of a simple reason. First of all, we want to take Krakow trade towards the Baltic Sea. Second of all, we can't really fight Russia, because look, if I attack Russia, I will be fighting half a million enemies. And in the same case, if I attacked Prussia. It's saying not as many, but I would also call Austrian allies to this war, which is Russia, Spain and England. Which doesn't make much sense, unfortunately, but the hack box is breaking us. And this is why I'm gonna go and attack Commonwealth. And as you can see, this is gonna be good news for us. Because attacking Commonwealth is gonna get Russia into the war. Without getting Austria and Spain to the allies. And this is simply because Russia warned us. So actually, I'm not gonna keep this army here. I'm gonna get them on the border of Russia and I'm gonna first separate peace Russia, take some trade centers, maybe money, and then take care of the Commonwealth. Imperialism, take Warsaw, and they were not paying for the Yaroslav force. I'm gonna go on force march straight over there. Of course, I'm not gonna be on time, I'm gonna be in one month, but I'm just gonna go and rush down this fort in a month or two. After this fort, second step is to take down Moskva, and then we'll see what to do next. Whoa, 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 Am I... I'm gonna wipe 45k troops. Like, there's no chance that it's not gonna be a wipe. There are three techs behind. Oh, sorry, there are four technologies behind. I have even for more of armies and have far better army quality in general. So let me show you that. I'm gonna start reinforcing that, but I'm afraid that I might not be on time to do so. Look at the difference in army qualities. One day, two days. Okay, the rain. Okay, that's not gonna be a wipe. They got enough troops to stop me from wiping them. But if these guys will be too late, this 49th. Yeah, they already changed their mind. So in this small battle, we've killed eh, 40k of troops. How many Russians died already? It's 122,000. So, Mr. Russia. With Moskva down, how are you? Not there yet. Let me go wipe some more troops. And we start with wiping them in Yaroslav, and I'm pretty sure that should be a wipe. This time we don't have such a problem with Menpor as I, like we did the last time. We are prepared for the war. Yeah, that's already 37% of the world's go for winning battles, even though the war goal is not to win the battles. There it goes, another stack. So Russians are left with 70 key troops. The absolute is just gonna be actually useful. I lose stability, but. 15 card absolutism and 20 max absolutism, which is gonna set us up for a far better peace deal against the Commonwealth. Because from Russia, I think I'm just gonna end up with taking money to repay our loans. So send this peace deal, that's 3000 ducats for us. Hello, I like money. Which allow me to repay all of the loans that are not for 1% of interest. The rest are 2.2 actually. So it's also not that much. And also a few. 1% loans, so just left with 10 of them, which is absolutely no interest. This is what I'm gonna take from Commonwealth. This, full money, maybe even more reparations if they accept. Yes, please do. But I'm not gonna keep it for myself. I don't have admin mana to core all of those promises. So instead, I will go and release... I wanted to release Krakow, but there's no such thing. So let me just create a puppet client state. In Warsaw, let's make it blue so nobody will see that uh, our puppet is part of the Swedish Empire and feed them with all of those promises that I just got. At the same time, I need to remember to divert trade from them and let's see how it's gonna impact our income. So with these changes, we are having 63 of total income and two more buildings to come, which I want to see their impacts on it. While the money that I got from Poland's not even repay loans because they are just really small. I will use this money to increase some of the trade centers in various nodes that we conquered. So, tick, tick. Even over here, I could invest in the local trade power. And let's see. Now, our trade income is 33.84. Let's see the difference after we finish the buildings. In the meantime, our ruler died, and we have Magnus for one bitter. <laughs> complete rush but we kind of don't care because we're about to finish this campaign 36.8 which is nice but if we could continue it we would make it far better but i think 67 income compared to like 20 each that we had at the start is very fine on top of that all of these terrains 
But we are kind of fulfilling the dream of the Charles XII. So I think that's pretty much a safe campaign for them. And they are still dominating the Baltic Sea. So guys, if you enjoy this type of the content to saving historic event campaigns, let me know by liking this video. And if you hit 4000 likes, we're gonna save Napoleon in 1815. If you enjoy historic ruined campaigns, you're gonna like me saving Cornwall from being partitioned or Prussia in the Seven Years' War. And of course, subscribe to the channel to get notified about the new videos.